to the first highlight of the SB Connect Olympic Series. Today, we are excited to connect with Megan Jastrab. Uh, she's from Apple Valley, California. Megan has been a professional cyclist for over seven years. Uh, she's earned 29 national titles and more than 50 medals. She is currently studying exercise science at Milligan University in Tennessee. We're gonna show a short video of Megan well, where she will share her journey as a student, as an athlete, and as an Olympian. And remember, during her presentation, feel free to type your questions into the chat box during the presentations, and she will address them uh, during the question and answer session at the end of the uh, presentation. Good morning. everyone. Um, my name is Megan Jastrev. Uh, thank you, Michael, for the introduction. The video ended with me saying that I was on the Olympic long team. And since then, a lot has changed. A lot has happened, especially with COVID-19 delaying the whole year. But before I get into my whole Olympic experience, I'll give a little bit of background on to where I grew up, how I got into the sports cycling, what I did through school and how I balanced it. And also a fun fact is that I'm only 19. So I feel like I'm still in the age range where you can kind of relate and understand. And I understand where you're coming from. So it's not just an older athlete telling you like, oh, you have 20 years to figure this out or 20 years to get through this. I'm a little bit younger. So I relate to where you're coming from and the struggles you're facing and the society, what people say you should do and shouldn't do. So I feel like I can relate and my story is a little bit more common to you. Um, so. I got into cycling because I grew up just outdoors with every, doing everything with my brother when I was younger. I played all kinds of different sports. I did soccer, I played baseball, I rode dirt bikes, I skied, um, track and field, swimming, diving. My parents' idea was to immerse my brother and I into any sports we could get our hands on to, just to find out what we liked, what we were good at, what we weren't good at, what skills we, were, um, we had, what we didn't have. 
And my parents wanted us to find something that we really were passionate about. And when I say we, sorry, I'll say this a lot in this conversation is my brother and I, I have an older brother who's a year and a half older than me. His name's Ryan. And we basically did everything together. So that was very helpful growing up and playing sports. I always had a training partner. So if you're in sports, if you have siblings or if you have a friend, I recommend trying to do something with them because it makes it a lot more enjoyable and easier to practice and you're held accountable. Um, so whenever I started doing sports, I played soccer for several years, thought I was gonna become a soccer player. And then I moved, didn't really have, I moved to the high desert and I didn't really have a lot of options to play soccer in the high desert as much as I would like. And my brother was kind of like, let's try something else, do something else. So I did switch and there was a BMX track about five minutes from my house, I would say. It was really close, so it was very helpful. And I started riding BMX track with my brother. Didn't really get the, didn't fall in love with cycling then, honestly. It took me a couple of years to actually fall in love with cycling. And I think that's something that we all can relate to because it takes time to find out what you're actually like. It's not gonna be first love of, uh, uh, love at first sight. It takes some time. And I, it's the same with like what you're doing in your career. It takes time to figure out what you're looking for, and what you want to do in your life. Um, after I did BMX, I took a break and I did running actually. And then later, like whenever I was in, I think 11, my dad was going on on road rides with some groups on Saturdays. And I was like, oh, I should try this. This looks so fun. Like I can do it with my dad even. It could be a family event. From there, I tried that. And again, I was not very interested. I was like, oh, it's my dad's thing. I don't want to do this. This is his thing. Like, no. But from there, I started going out more. I went to a local race. And just the community in cycling is so small. But everyone's so welcoming. It's so much fun. And so I gave it a try. Um, I raced one weekend. I was like, oh, this is fun, whatever. Like, just did whatever. Didn't really train for it or anything. And then from there, we, my brother was fell in love with the sports, then I kind of was dragged into it a little bit more. And from just racing locally, it went to a little bit more advanced, um, traveling to different states to race cycling. And then I moved to nationals. And then I was fortunate enough to get um, selected to go to Europe. So I was able to race my bike in a completely different country. I would travel to Belgium, to the Netherlands, um, raced there, met some incredible people, experienced a completely different culture. And then after I raced in Europe, I came back to the US and I was invited onto a national team camp. So a national team camp is based in Colorado Springs in Colorado. Um, it's with the USA national team. I was on the track cycling program and I was told that, hey, do you have potential to possibly make the Olympic team? Okay, so as a 16 year old, when I was told, oh, you can make the Olympic team, like everything lit up. I was like, wait, you're serious? I can do cycling in the Olympics, that's a thing? Like not a lot of people understand, like that's a thing. So I, of course, was that like got my attention, really motivated me. And from there, just kind of progressed to like training more, taking it seriously, understanding how my nutrition, my sleep, everything affects my performance. And it just developed into this amazing, like, dream of, hey, I have the opportunity, why not take advantage of it? And that can be based in anything in life. It can be any sport you wanna do, any school, degree, whatever you wanna do in life. I think having big goals is what you need to focus on because when you're shooting for a big goal, there's smaller achievements that you make along the way. So everything that you achieve is building to that goal. And yes, the Olympics was the highest goal in cycling and in athletics, it's something that you see on TV, you watch, you understand. And for me personally, I wanted to race world championships. I wanted to race in Europe again as an elite rider. I wanted to make the Olympic team. I wanted to win a medal. And I set those goals in order to motivate myself. But at the same time, I was trying to keep it in perspective of what those goals actually meant. And it's kind of crazy to think about that, that my goals actually becoming a reality. But what I want to share with you is that it is possible. You can achieve those goals and you have to dream big because in this world, you're told if you work hard, you can achieve anything. And I think I'm a testament to that because I made sure that I was eating right. I was sleeping well. I was training. I set those goals 
And I think that's what you can do in life. And I'm not saying it's just in cycling. It can be any sport you do. Um, so that's my basically my whole story leading up to it. A little bit about this past year leading into the Olympics. Um, I was invited, let's rewind a little bit. In 2019, I traveled to uh, Britain in the UK and I raced the world championship there. I was able to win my category race. And from there, I went back to school in Tennessee where I'm now. So I started as a freshman in college and I was at school just taking a normal off season, going to classes, living in my dorm. And I received an email from the national team inviting me to live in Colorado in the spring of 2020 to try and make the Olympic team. Um, let's just say I kind of freaked out whenever that I got that email. I was like, hold up, wait a minute, you're serious? Um, so that was a really highlight for me in 2019. So just a freshman in college, going through my normal day. And then from there, I went home in the December and then I moved back, or it was January 1st, actually. My mom and I drove out to Colorado Springs where I was based. And I was given the opportunity to race a World Cup with the national team in Canada. Um, I placed third there. And then from there, I traveled to Germany for the World Championship. Um, I didn't have the best race there, sadly, but it worked out. Um, and then as soon as we returned in 2020, it was March of 2020 uh, from Germany, we were told COVID was happening. Um, the world was shutting down, basically. Um, the Olympics were gonna be postponed or canceled. So we're living in Colorado Springs. The whole team is based there. We have this big goal. Everything is going on the right track and then the world shuts down. And I think all of us can relate to that because schools were closed. You had to take online classes, sports were canceled. And you had to move, you had to be with your family the whole 24 seven, which I, it, it's a struggle. It's not easy. And I can relate to that. <laughs> um, you want your freedom. You're at that age where you should be able to do what you want um, and have a little bit more freedom to express yourself. So moving back um, from there, we were basically told, hey, you need to keep training for this entire time because there's a 50-50 chance of the Olympics happening. There's a 50% chance it's not going to happen. So having that mentality of being able to train for something or having to push yourself every single day doing like I said, the nutrition, sleep, training, everything without even knowing it's going to happen is very hard. And I think the only thing that kept me going was having a team around me, a support group and saying something whenever I didn't feel good or just realizing that there were people there to talk to about it. And that's something that everyone can use in school still. Like the world's not back to normal. It's hard. Um, we're at the age where everything's an unknown, whether you're in high school about to graduate, um, if you're junior high and you don't know what you're gonna do going into high school, you're changing schools, new friend groups, and just all these unknowns are hard to cope with. So I think the biggest thing is that knowing that it will work out and these unknowns shouldn't be something that you're afraid of. They should be something that you're like excited for because it's exciting. It's new things, new experiences, places you can go to, places you can see, it's all things to add to your life and what you can do in the future. So yeah, it's unknowns are not something you shouldn't be worried about. They're exciting. Um, from there, I, while I was based in Colorado Springs, I decided to take some extra classes in school at Milligan. So I was online taking online classes, working towards my degree. I decided to double major in business and exercise science. I don't know if you know it, business is pretty generic and like everyone probably knows what it is, but exercise science, it's a little bit different and it's relatable to athletics because it takes into classes like anatomy, physiology, chemistry, nutrition. Um, it's very useful to athletes because it relates to me specifically. All the classes I'm taking guide me and help me, give me information going into like sports. So it's a really nice degree if you're in athletics and you're interested in that field and like how you, physically, like how it all relates. Um, from there, I basically was in Colorado the whole year. Um, we didn't race at all. And then in January of this year, we were just told like, okay, you're gonna keep training and hopefully the Olympics happen. And I think it was around February, March, we were had our Olympic selections. And from there it was like, um, you just trained, there was no real selection documents or anything anymore for making the team. And it was more just like you trained, 
and however the coach saw you like ride in your times, that's what the selection was for the Olympics. So it was really a nervous time. Everyone was kind of stressed. Um, and there were about, I think, eight of us on the long team trying to make the Olympics. And from there, it got dwindled down to six riders. So two people were not going to make the Olympics. Um, I was going for the team pursuit, which is a team of five, and then the Madison, which is a team of two. So it was a very stressful time all this whole year up until March, April, April 1st, we were given a call. And I remember it very clearly the day that selections were called because I had a two hour training ride. I went out in the morning, I was like, okay, we're told we're gonna get the call May 1st or April 1st in the morning sometimes. So I was like, okay, I have to train, I have to come back, eat lunch and I have to go to the gym. So I'm like, I might get this call on my training. Ride. I was like, how am I gonna handle it? Like, is it gonna be a good call and then all my dreams are gonna come true or are is this whole last year and a half gonna be like kind of like crushed and I'm gonna be like crying. <laughs> so it was either way, I was like mentally preparing of like how it was gonna go down. So I went up and I think halfway through it, I was climbing this hill, just going easy. And I get this call. I literally skidded to the stop mid road, pulled off to the side road. I was like, hello, like, hello. And they're like, oh, hi, Megan. Like, so it's so-and-so from the selection board. We have the decision of like, if you're making the Olympics, if you're not. And I was like, okay, so tell me like, yes, no. Like, can you tell me? And they're like, they started asking me like, how I am am I by myself? And I'm like, why are you asking me these questions? Can you please just tell me yes or no? And finally, like, it was probably only like 20 seconds to be realistic. But for me, it felt like, an hour till they got to it. But finally they're like, hey Megan, we're glad, we're um, excited to announce that you've been selected by the board to go to the Olympics. I literally like breath was taken away. Everything was just stopped. The whole world stopped basically for me. I was so excited. I got through the call, I was like, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I just hung up the phone and just started crying happy tears because like the stress of uh, waiting for that call, the stress of the extra year because of COVID, everything building up to this point and like realizing your my dreams actually came true it was just phenomenal I I always say that getting to the Olympics was like special but hearing that call and being selected was almost equally as exciting I think so from there you're selected I was selected um nothing really changes honestly <laughs> it was kind of disappointing like yes you're selected but the training continues the stress continues because now your focus instead of shifts, instead of being like, I want to qualify, it shifts to performance and how best you can support the team, how you can try and win the Olympics, if you can medal, um, if you can set a new record, all your perspectives now changed. And it was three months out to the Olympics. So Olympics were told we were gonna happen. There was a pretty set. Um, and then from there, once, we did it. We stayed in Colorado Springs, the whole team. And then I think two weeks before we moved to, we came to California to do a camp there. So it was actually like my home track. It was a little bit past San Bernardino. So I know this group is from San Bernardino, but I think it was more in LA County, um, a little bit farther down. We had a camp for two weeks before we went to Tokyo. And then everything went really well. We were riding well as a team. I had some really great training sessions, which are always great for confidence because in the sports, I think mentally like you can be physically fit you can be physically ready to do anything but if you're not in the right headspace you're not in the right mentality to achieve something it's going to be very hard to perform come race day or competition so from there it was really nice traveling to tokyo there was a lot of covid tests there was a lot of strict rules about masks um, who you could be around where you could go to and then once we got to the village we were able to build our bikes we were able to like go to the cafeteria eat some food uh, experience a little bit of the Tokyo, like, um, like the culture of it. So that was really nice and exciting. And then it was, we only had one week until race day, which is very short, but because of COVID rules, you could not fly in earlier. You just had to come in and you're racing. So we were able to go practice on the track, see other countries, meet other athletes, um, start getting all the clothing. Um, I got like a jacket, whole bunch of like shirts, shoes, everything. So it was really exciting. That was probably like, oh, it's actually happening. That we're actually at the Olympics. Really exciting times. And then once it came race day, like I think the hardest, the most memories that I have about that is just being like weirdly calm. I don't know why, but normally for races, I get really stressed and I'm like, uh, like, what do I do? What happens here? But I was 
really calm. And I think what that, the reason why I was so calm is because I realized that I had done everything I possibly could to get to this point. I don't think I could change one thing on my intervals. I don't think I could change anything for training. Um, I slept well, I ate well. And I was like, whatever happens, happens. And that's one thing I try and live by is having no regrets. And I can confidently say that whenever I got to the start line of the Olympics, I had no regrets on what I did. Whatever happened was going to happen. I couldn't go back and say, hey, I would fix this or I would change that. And that's so nice. Um, that could be starting any competitions. It could be starting exams. If you just start and you're like, well, whatever happens, happens. I did my best to get to this point. And it's just a relief. It's off yourself. And I recommend if any of you can do that. It's amazing. Um, after, the, after that race happened, um, there was three rounds in the team pursuit. So qualifying, I did not ride. A teammate rode that. And then for round one, and then round three, I rode. Um, round two and three, it was like seating for what round you were in. So like if you're going for gold, silver, bronze, we qualified for the bronze medal ride. ride um, and I was in that one. So I'm 19, had never raced a team pursuit before actually. I've only done it in training. So it was my first in competition team pursuit. So I started, um, I'm racing with the current world champions on the US. So it was very exciting. I had an amazing support team around me. And yeah, like you're at the Olympics, you're on the start line. There's not many spectators, which was strange um, because of COVID restrictions, but I line up and I'm like, we're doing this. This is actually happening after a year and a half or back when I first found out in 2019 that I was going to go to the Olympic training center. I'm like, this is happening. Like, wait, is this like the only thing that's going to happen? Like I have four minutes basically for my race and then it's all over. So that was crazy realization, but I was super, I was still calm, but the race happened, the race ended and we were, we won the bronze. So to be able to make the Olympics was exciting to be able to be on the start line was exciting. And then to win a bronze medal, like I can't even put it into words. I still don't think I processed it. And it's like, what, two months later. Um, it was just such a highlight of my career and a memory that I won't, will never forget. Um, so from there now after the Olympics, happened. That was amazing. Everything was great. Um, I traveled back to the U.S. and then I went to Europe again actually to race on the road with my uh, road team and then that was just normal racing on the road. Nothing, I don't really know if there's anything exciting that happened there, but I was in Europe. I got to travel to Spain. I got to travel to the Netherlands, Belgium, France, and then I traveled back to the U.S. and now I'm at school. Um, I don't know if you can tell. I'm in a dorm room. This is what they are. Um, I tried to decorate for this interview. I'm not very creative, sorry guys. And I placed like some twinkly lights, some blinds up and then like some really awkwardly placed like photos. So I'm trying to like hide it right now. Um, but if you're in high school and you're going to college, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to think of something creative to do with your dorms because they're kind of just white brick walls. That's all you get. <laughs> Maybe you're going to a cool, cool school but my school is not very, elegant. Um, so some advice I would have for like balancing school and athletics or whatever you're doing, um, really stay on top of it because traveling so much, racing, training, and doing academics is hard. Um, it's not going to be easy. You're going to have to find ways to balance everything and figure it out yourself. Um, there's not going to be anyone holding your hand, walking you through it through school. Um, you need to be self-motivated and just be really focused on what you're trying to achieve. If it's getting good grades, if it's balancing academics and making it to training practices, whatever it is, like you really need to have those goals you're setting for yourself to make sure that you're staying on track and talk to your professors. They're willing to help you. They're there to help um, your teachers, friends, your parents, just make sure you're talking to them and asking questions. Um, oops, sorry. Um, but it's just a lot you can achieve as, at a young age. And it's something that I recommend that you strive to be your best in everything you do. Like, don't think that just because you're young, you can't achieve something. You can do whatever you want in life and going to school, academics, whatever it is, just keep reaching for it and keep striving to do your very best. Um, a little bit about like what field and studying and stuff like that, why I chose business and exercise. I think I touched on a little bit was 
business, like I can, in sports and athletics, you can use your connections that you meet and just meet a lot of people. And then from a business degree, you can use those connections to find a job that you like. Um, you can do whatever you want. I like exercise science because like I said, it has all the classes that work with me. It helps me um, just go into the different fields. Okay, so I have two things I'd like to show for show and tell. The first one I think is the most exciting one, but the second one's pretty cool too. The first one is my actual Olympic bronze medal. I don't know if you can see. Um, this is what I won. Um, it has the little like name engraved on the bottom, like it's probably upside down. Ugh. Sorry. <laughs> no worries, yeah. technology. There's that. Yeah. Um, thank you. And then that's the ribbon. So that's. <laughs> So that's what I won. Um, very special. I still, I have a photo of me like touching it and seeing it for the first time. And it's just like me, like, like whatever is going on. I don't know what was, I don't remember. It was like, I was so shocked. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So that's really exciting. Um, the second thing I think is pretty cool. It's actually my bike. Um, I'll try and, I'm sorry guys, you're gonna have to bear with me on this. Uh, I'm not very good at technology at all, but I will show you, give you a demonstration of what actually a uh, bike is and what I use. Okay, so this is a road bike. Um, I race on the track, so a little bit different between what I used here and at the Olympics was that I didn't have like this gear section of it. Um, a track bike has one single gear on it and you can't stop pedaling. There's no brakes. Um, it's a little bit dangerous, so I recommend if you're trying to look again into cycling, you look for a road bike, a mountain bike, um, whatever you want to do. But this one is, you have your front chain ring, you have rear gears, you have your cranks. Um, I also use cleats, um, track cyclists, road cyclists, whatever you want. You have these special little pedals where you have your shoes, there's some, like a little contraption on the bottom that clips in. So it's more efficient. So when you're pedaling, you are putting more power onto the pedals, you're able to go faster. Um, it's a little hard to learn. You fall over a couple times when you first use cleats. Um, so do it in a grass to use cleats. <laughs> recommend. Um, I recommend using a light on the bike just if you're riding on the road just for extra safety. Um, you have water bottles. This little thing under my seat is a, a repair kit or a patch kit. So if I'm flat um, because there's debris on the road or my tires go flat, you can just like repair it on your own. You don't have to worry about um, just being stranded because that would not be good. Um, I have gears up here, there's brakes. Um, these bikes are really a uh, high tech because there's the brakes aren't just like normal caliber brakes, there's rotors on the front. So it's extra safety and stopping power. Um, and then for training purposes, there's this little head unit on my bike that I use. Um, it's called, this one's a Wahoo, you can use like Garmin or whatever, but it tracks like the power you put out, your heart rate, your speed, your distance. So it's really nice for coaches to have this little like doodad, um, just like to track what you're doing and just see where you can improve, where you're struggling in, if you need a recovery day or you could push harder. So that's a little bit about what I use on the bike. Um, yeah, uh, this bike also is a little bit lighter than a track bike um, because on the road, everything's about like, how heavy it is, what the functionality is, whereas the track, it's all about speed and aerodynamics. So a little bit of differences, but yeah, that's my bike. That's my medal. Does anyone have any questions? We'll take questions in the chat box now. And as we're waiting for questions, Megan, um, in the chat box, can you speak to the importance of being organized as a student athlete, a lot of our students on the chat here, are, they're not in elementary school, they're in middle and high school, and there's a, a level of uh, importance of making sure they're on top of uh, their instruction on a day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week basis. Yeah, organization is definitely a key that you need to learn. Um, everyone's organizational like ideas and how you work with it is gonna be different. I'm very task oriented, I would say. So I like to have a notebook to write down like what I need to do for the day, what I need to do for the week, what events are coming up. And it just is fitting in with your schedule. Are you a morning person? Are you a night person? Um, what subjects in school do you like to do in the morning? Do you 
are you more efficient in the evening, whatever it is, but just finding a system that works for you. It's going to take time. Some trial and error is going to happen, but just taking your time to figure out what works best for you is going to help immensely. So staying on top of tasks, being organized with like your schoolwork, your training, and then just your social life. I think organization also needs to make sure that you're not just being like always doing something. You can relax, take time for yourself, enjoy it, go out, hang out with friends, whatever you want to do, but just make sure that you focus on getting your main task done and then free time because if you're always timing mean, out your day, like it's not going to be a good day. Like you're going to be disappointed that you didn't have time with your friends. You didn't have time to go out and explore and see things. So by staying on top of your tasks and just getting them done when they're due or working ahead, even I think in athletics and at our age, you can really be efficient and work ahead and get things done. So you have more free time. Thank you. We have a, a question. The question is, can you share an example of when you failed at something but persevered and worked through it and the importance of learning through failure? Yeah, of course. Um, there's a lot of bad days um, in cycling um, and not in, not in just cycling, but in life. There's going to be hard days. There's going to be good days. Um, the hard days, I think, are where you need to really fight through it because it makes the good days better. Like you can't have good days if there's no bad days, actually. But uh, a specific example of when I failed would probably be at Worlds, like I said, in Germany um, during the Madison. Um, I did not perform well. I had a really rough day on the bike. I let my teammate down. Like, yes, yeah, she wasn't upset with me, but like when it's a team sport, like you're supposed to both perform. So whenever I didn't perform on my end, I felt disappointed because I let her down. I we could have done a lot better if I had a better day on the bike. So that was one I really struggled with. Um, I mentally was not happy with it. I would watch the video replays and I just could not figure out what I did, what I could have done differently. And it was really challenging. But I think the main thing about working through failures is that you're gonna know, they're gonna happen. They're, it's not gonna be a one-time thing. It's gonna happen again and again and again. But the only thing that matters is how you get up from that. If you take a positive attitude and you're like, it happened, let's work, let's move forward and work on what I can control. And I think that's the big thing in life at our age is that controlling the controllables. You're experiencing a lot of new things and you're not gonna know the answers to everything. You're not gonna know why it's happening or what's going on, but just keeping a positive attitude and understanding that it will get better or something will happen is the main thing. So failures are gonna be a part of life. It's okay, accept it and just keep a positive attitude moving forward. Wonderful, we have quite a few questions. Here's a quick question, what's your favorite color? My favorite color is purple. It doesn't show my room right now, but if you go to my room at home, it purple walls, purple covers, purple everything. So definitely. Wonderful, also someone wants to know why does one of the bikes have no brakes? I think she means mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> yeah. tires. Mm -hmm. uh, no, there's no brakes on track bikes because that's just the different disciplines in cycling. There's five different disciplines in cycling and this one behind me is a road bike. Um, and then the track cycling, it's bike is more like just one gear. You're on an enclosed track. Um, it's called the velodrome. So there's banking on the sides um, in the turn. So you don't need to slow down because you're not out on the road. Um, the gear is one gear and it's fixed. So if you want to slow down, you kind of just put back pressure on the pedals and that's your brake. They're not brake levers, but you just back pedal and you'll slow down and stop. Okay, there's a participant that wants to know how it feels to explore the world on your bike. That is one of the many, one of the best perks I think of cycling and athletics. I was probably 12, no, I was 13, I went to nationals. And I was told when I got older is that if I won at nationals, I would travel to Europe for um, the world championship. I was like, wait a minute, cycling can take me to Europe. I've never traveled outside of the US. I was so excited um, and track cycling, not track cycling, but cycling in general, it takes you so many places. You can cover a lot of ground. Um, I like it because 
you're not driving, it's not driving speed. Um, you gotta slow down a little bit and take in the scenery, see different places. And just like here, like in Tennessee, I get to explore so many different roads in the back and the hills and the mountains. I get to travel to different states. I get to ride with different people. Um, so the bike opens up a lot of different avenues to where I can go exploring. Awesome, awesome. We'll take two more questions. I have a question. You mentioned earlier about being a part of a team, but one of your first teams actually that you were part of was your family. So can you speak to how important your family has been to your growth academically um, or athletically? Yeah, family is a big part of what has made me successful. I think as younger, as we're younger, um, our parents are our role models and they still are, are my role models to this day. Um, I met a lot of people, but I always go back to my core values and that comes from my parents, my grandparents, my brother, and just trusting them is a key factor. I think when we're younger, we always have these ideas about what's right and wrong, but you have to understand our, your parents have gone through so much more than you. They've been in your position and yes, things have changed over the years. I know we think they're old, um, they don't know anything, but they did experience the same things as us um, for the majority of it. And just trusting them, listening to their advice. Um, yes, we don't have to agree on everything with them, but just respecting their opinions and trusting that they're looking out for the, your best interest is a key thing. And yeah, like my parents drove me to races. They were there whenever I failed. They're there whenever I succeeded. And just being able to share those experiences with them has been amazing because it's so much more fun when you're doing it with people you like and your family is always there to support you. Great, I'm gonna squeeze in one more question before the last question. A student wants to know what your favorite animal is. Ooh, guys, don't do this to me. Are you pitting me against cat and dog right now? Like, <laughs> is, this, is this what it is? I feel like I'm being tested. Um, I can't say I have one favorite animal because I am a huge animal fan. Um, I, right now I have a cat and two dogs. So I don't know if the two dogs win because I only have one cat, but I love all animals. So I do like the dog because you can take him to races, which is always fun. So like, if you're having a bad race, you can just like go to the dog and be like, help me. <laughs> um, just that's always nice, but. I think just any animals, just they're so cool. They're so caring. Um, yeah, I don't have one favorite, sorry. <laughs> well, this has been an incredible, incredible session. We will end with this last question. What is your definition of success? Ooh, that's a big question. Um, I think my definition of success is probably like the motto I live by is having no regrets. Um, success does not need to be in the form of grades. It does not need to be in the form of winning. It does not need to be in the form of pleasing everyone or looking a certain way or holding a certain image. Success is whatever you define it as. And I think the biggest thing you can do to be successful is just knowing you did your very best. Just trying every day, giving 100% and having no regrets would could be considered successful. So when you sit down for your exam, and you know, you studied, you listened in class, you took the advice to your professors, um, you went to study groups, whatever it is, I think that's something that you can be proud of and you can consider a success. Well said. Again, Megan, thank you so much for reaching out to the Inland Empire all the way from Tennessee <laughs> uh, on behalf of the Alliance for Education team and the educators all around the Inland Empire, thank you and congratulations. You can follow Megan, I believe on social media. Is it mm -hmm. Instagram? Yeah, Instagram is my main platform. It's just literally my name, Megan Jastrup. <laughs> I'm not very creative with usernames, sorry. <laughs> so definitely uh, if you're interested in following her career, reaching out to her, uh, check her out on Instagram, but Inland Empire, we look forward to seeing you at our next SB Connect session and look for our next event on sbcalliance.org. Thank you and have a wonderful weekend. Bye, everyone. Thanks for coming. Later. Bye.